what's up? It is Becca, and today I wanted to do a uh, different, slightly different video. Um, I know I've talked a lot before in other videos about tattoos, body modifications, uh, whatnot. Um, but I think now I've gotten to a point, and I've, I've gotten quite a few um, tattoos at this point. I wouldn't say I'm like all tatted up. But you know, I have a, a, a decent amount of tattoos. And so I guess the, the topic I wanted to discuss is tattoo regret. Um, tattoo knowledge I've gained through personal experience as well as um, knowing tattoo artists personally um, and being more familiar with the industry and, and things like that. So I think one thing this kind of wanted to be like a, a take it from me, someone who's made certain mistakes, don't do these mistakes because then you'll be stuck living with regret. Um, as you guys can tell, this is a no makeup video. Um, I don't have my hair done. I'm doing this video spur of the moment, not even at my own house um, because I'm trying to get on top of YouTube videos and trying to actually be consistent with uploading so that's why I'm making this video all right let's get into tattoo regret slash things I wish I knew things and things I would do differently Tattoo regret number one. Um, backstory. Um, probably from the time I was about 12 years old, um, I had heavy influences of the uh, alternative modeling world. Um, I looked up to Suicide Girls a lot, um, especially after seeing that one show that used to be super popular. I think it was it was either MTV or VH1, um, and it was called Paris Hilton's My New Best Friend. Now, one of the contestants on there was a girl named Zoo Watts, uh, or um, Zoo Suicide, as she went by on Suicide Girls. Um, and she had a really interesting alternative look, and um, she was on Suicide Girls, which if you don't know what Suicide Girls is, it is an alternative, implied, and nude, um, alternative modeling website. Um, very popular in the alternative world. Yeah, pretty much if you're involved in the alternative world at all, you know what Suicide Girls is. So pretty much from the age of 12 years old, I had my heart set on being an alternative tattooed model. I also went through the scene and emo goth. I was kind of a combination of all of them put together. Um, I was alternative, definitely. So going through those phases as well kind of contributed to it. Um, I always had a fascination with tattoos. Um, so for me, you know, I had this strong desire so badly of... I just want to be an alternative tattoo model, which I did do a lot of alternative tattoo modeling. Um, I've been featured on, in some online magazines. Off the top of my head, I can't remember which ones about that. My camera cut out. I apparently had um, not enough space. So we will get through this as quickly as I can, or I might do this as a series of advice. Um, so I did some alternative modeling once I was after the age of 18. Obviously, I live in the United States. So in order to do that kind of thing, you have to be over the age of 18. So for me, I think one piece of advice I would say, and I definitely made this mistake myself, don't be so stuck in the notion of, I just want to be tattooed, I just want tattoos, um, to uphold a certain image. No, I'm not saying don't get tattoos that you want, 
that don't have a specific meaning just because you like that design. Or, hey, this is one of my favorite bands that had influence on me. I like their, I like their logo. Or, I don't know, I wanted a fucking cat tattoo because it was a fucking cute tattoo. I'm not saying don't get random tattoos because, you know, it's your body. If you want to put it on there, put it on there. But don't just get tattooed just for the sake of getting tattooed and wanting to have a tattooed image. That is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I made. I started getting tattooed at the age of 17 um, with my first tattoo, which actually, I have no problem with the tattoo itself. Um, I still like the design of it. Um, I obviously did not get it from a professional. Um, I got it from someone who is considered a scratcher, um, and basically a scratcher just means that you don't work in a shop, you work from home kind of thing, you're not in a professional environment. Um, and not all scratchers are not talented, it just means you're not professional. Um, so I got my first tattoo at 17 from a non-professional scratcher, as it's called in the tattoo world. Um, so I still have, I have no problem with that tattoo. It's just, uh, with my pregnancy with my son because of the location of the tattoo, um, and pregnancy doing weird things to your skin, um, when I had stretch marks and my skin stretched, um, it kind of blew out slash stretched a lot of the, uh, design, which is now partially being covered up and I'm working on a uh, piece to cover up my entire stomach to get rid of that design. It's not that I didn't like the design, it's just the design got messed up due to, you know, natural body occurrence, basically. Um, but yeah, that's probably the biggest advice I can give is don't just get go and get a bunch of tattoos or be so quick to get tattoos because you want to fulfill a certain image. Now, if you want to get a bunch of tattoos at a young age because you want to, oh look, I'm just saying this from my personal experience, you can do whatever you want to do. I'm just saying from my I would have known and done differently. Moving on. Um, tattoo regrets that I have. Um, this goes in, in, hand in hand with the first point I made. Um, there was a tattoo, I'm not even going to call him a fucking tattoo artist because he's such a disgusting person that he doesn't even deserve the title of tattoo artist. Um, he turned out to be a really creepy, disgusting guy. And I have quite a few tattoos from him. And one of the tattoos I absolutely love, and it, it's turned into a love-hate relationship because I really hate the guy who did it. Um, basically, just the story is that he turned out to be a super creep and was trying to drug a girl uh, while he had her in his shop all alone and basically tried to drug and rape her. Um, he did get arrested, caught and arrested for it. So I have a few tattoos from him. One of them I absolutely love because of the design of it. But uh, I do have a couple others that they're just very mediocre work, which I can't fucking complain too much because they were free tattoos. So you know what? It's you get what you pay for. I didn't pay anything, so it's mediocre work that thankfully can easily be covered. So, there's another thing. Um, that point being, look into your artist. Um, does this person have a good reputation? If, is this person giving you weird vibes that tell you, like, there's something up with this person? Like, I mean, by all means, if you want to go get tattooed by a druggie or a creepy dude because he's going to give you a discount, by all means, do what you want to do. Coming from personal experience, don't do it. Research your artist. Look into someone who's going to give you good quality work. Don't always look for a deal either because that in itself, good tattoos aren't cheap, cheap tattoos aren't good. There's very few exceptions to that rule. But point, point being, 
Research your artists. Plain and simple. Um, next topic I'm going to talk about is partially my own stupidity, and I'm sure there's lots of other people out there who can validate this and relate with this. Tattooing yourself. Alright, so for many, many years of my life, I myself wanted to, at one point in life, become a tattoo artist. You know who was my starting out canvas? Myself. I have almost an entire leg. Both my thigh, actually both thighs, because I tattooed both thighs, and my right calf shaft, slash shin slash foot. Myself. In the sake of practicing. So now, um, being three years, three years later on down the road from tattooing myself, um, I have a lot of regret, and it's actually so bad that I don't show my legs. Um, it's become one of my biggest insecurities. I know some of the stuff isn't that bad, but there is some stuff that where I went, okay, I'm going to do a cover-up on myself, which then turned out worse. <laughs> Not worse, but it's all around bad. Um, and I will eventually be, you know, saving up to get um, tattoo um, fading cream laser tattoo removal and then paying the money to have a nice cover-up done on my leg so I can finally regain my self-confidence. So, word of advice from someone who's dealt with this personally, don't tattoo yourself. Plain and simple. Get pigskin. Buy the fake uh, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a company that makes, um, as realistic as possible, artificial um, hands, forearms, and then um, they do like a wooden framed canvas made out of the material. Um, practice on that shit. Don't tattoo yourself, because you may end up like me, who, I don't wear shorts. I haven't worn a bathing suit in public in probably three years now. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much my advice on that. Don't tattoo yourself. Unless you want the potential of having to pay for removal and professional cover. And all the self-confidence issues that comes along from having shitty tattoos that you are the only one to blame for. Moving on. Which, side note, there is a few that I've done on myself that I, I absolutely love. My main issue is my right thigh. That's my issue area. Other than that, the other ones I'm not that bothered by. But my right thigh is just a fucking mess. <laughs> um... So yeah, avoid that. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, tattoo placement and tattoo, tattoo placement, tattoo theme, and design. For me personally, this is something I would go back and change. I'm not saying that I don't love a lot of the tattoos that I have. I do. Some of them have a lot of meaning to me. Some of them I wouldn't change for the world. But now, in the past five years, I've kind of figured out the style slash the theme of tattooing that I personally really like. And I wish that I could take a lot of my current tattoos and move them to be more cohesive in certain areas. With those tattoos, really kind of plan out, think about, uh, things kind of plan out like 
if I do want to get a lot of tattoos, get things that can be easily done. There's so many cuts in this, my camera is being really stupid because it's my phone um, and the storage on it's retarded. So just plan out. Plan your fucking tattoos out. I have so many ideas now of how I want like this entire part of my arm to be and this part of my arm and a giant large scale intricate pieces that I wish I would have the knowledge that I have now back when I started. My tattoos I feel would be so much better at least as far as placement and cohesiveness and I guess I'm just rambling on at this point. But so far, these are the few bits of advice. Take it from me, someone who's fucked up, and apply it to yourself so you don't fuck up like me. <laughs> Problem solved. Just a couple things of advice. Maybe I'll do a whole series of... Take it from me, someone who's done these messed up or mistakes personally, and don't make the same mistakes as me. But, like I said, this whole video is just from personal experience. This is just my advice. Whether you want to take it or not, that's up to you. By all means, make your choices. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This has been Tattoo Regrets. Slash. Things I Wish I Knew. Slash. Mistakes that I made, etc., etc. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to me, hit the thumbs up, and uh, I think I'm gonna be doing a giveaway soon. We'll see. I have a whole fucking bag of shit at home that I think would be perfect for a giveaway. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and have a good day. Bye.